In this lesson, we're going to be looking at relative frequency graphs. Our objectives are to understand what a relative frequency graph is and to understand how to create a relative frequency graph. Our key vocabulary would be relative frequency graph, which is really just a graph showing a category compared to the total, usually using percents. Typically, we use circle graphs. We can also use bar graphs, and I'll show you both. Uh, circle graphs are sometimes known as pie charts. That's why we use the percents. As in all graphs, we need to start with data. So I have some data, data up here. Uh, grades on the test, we've gone with just A through F for simplification, no pluses or minuses, and the frequency with which each happened. So four A's, nine B's, and so on. We have a total of 25. Relative frequency starts with a fraction, a comparison of the frequency to the total. So here I have four over 25, nine over 25, and so on. This is a comparison of the two. What we want to start with is using the fraction to create a decimal, and then using the decimal to create a percent. The percent will be what we'll typically use for a relative frequency. The decimal we'll use to find the degrees of, of the circle. And then from there, we can make our pie chart. So I'll get out my phone, use it as a calculator. And we'll start with 4 divided by 25. So that gives us the decimal. 0.16. Well, this one's also 4 out of 25, so I know that that one's got to be 0.16. Now, what we use that decimal for is we'll multiply it by 360. That'll give us the degrees. So now I'll just do the rest of them and show you how to turn those into percents. So we've got 9 divided by 25 which is 0.36, 5 divided by 25, which is 0.2, and 3 divided by 25, which is 0.12. So now we have all these decimals. Uh, the next place that we want to go is to turn them all into percents. Well, the easiest way to turn anything into a percent is take the decimal and then multiply it by 100. So we're going to take 0.16 and times by 100. So when we do that, um, we will get 16%. Times 0.36 by 100, you'll get 36%. Times 0.2 by 100, and you get 20%, times 0.12 by 100, and you get 12%, and times 0.16 by 100, you get 16%. So now we have our percents. The only thing left is for the pie chart, we want to then take these decimals, times them by 360, and we'll have the degrees to measure for our pie chart. So we've got 360 times 0.16. We get 57.6 degrees. So this one down here is going to be 57.6 degrees also, as they're the same. 360 times 0.36 gives us 129.6 degrees. 360 times 0.2 gives us 72 degrees. And 360 times 0.12 gives us 43 point two degrees. So if you notice we have decimals here. Uh, the protractor that I'm going to use isn't uh, the most 
accurate thing as it doesn't have decimals on it. So we're going to just have to estimate these as best we can, which is what you guys will be doing anyway. Um, we'll have protractors for you to measure these out, but they're never going to be perfect. So you just figure your numbers and estimate as close as possible. So 57.6 could very well end up being more like 58, 57 degrees, somewhere in there. We're going to start with the easiest relative frequency graph though, which is a bar graph. Basically what we do is we put our category on the bottom and we put our relative frequency or percent on the side and we just make bars from there. So we've got 16% for 30 for A's. So here's 15, here's 20, so 16 just above that and we make our bar. B, we had 36. so just above 35. C, we've got 20. D, we had 12%. So we got 10 just above the 10. And F was back up to 16. Now remember, even though this is a bar graph, this is still not giving us raw numbers. It's just giving us percents. That's the idea of a relative frequency graph. Now we're going to make the pie chart, which is what we more commonly see with percents. So here what I have is a circle graph drawn. Um, I used a compass to make a nice pretty circle. We always need our center point. And what we want to start with is we want um, a line to basically start from. So there's our original line and now what we want to do is we want to measure off of our protractor to for the degrees and then we'll put the percentages inside. So I'm just going to go A through F, work my way down. So to measure with the protractor, we're going to put it right, um, the base right on the line, and our little line here right at the center point. And then we're going to start from here, we're going to count by our lower numbers and going left. So I want to go to 57, so here's 50, here's 55, 57.6 would probably be about halfway. And then we're going to measure on. So this was my A, which was 16%. Okay, and now as we measure, we're going to use this as our starting point, our new line, and we're just going to work our way around. Now this is something that's a little bit tough to kind of visualize, but doing it on your own, you'll kind of get this. So in class, make sure you ask and I'll try and uh, guide you through this. So this time we have 129.6, so that's basically 130 degrees. So I'm going to measure here. I've got 0, there's 90, 100, 110, 120, just shy of 130 here. So this was our B, which was 36%. Uh, then we've got 72 degrees here. Now this is my new starting line, so I've got to actually turn my compass, or my, my protractor, sorry, to the side and keep counting. So 10, 20, 30, there's 70, so just beyond 70 here. Then I want to draw my straight line. Okay, so this now is our C at 20 percent and we've got two more we want to go to 43.2 degrees so I turn here so we go 10 20 30 40 here's 45 so 43 is about halfway a little bit over and we're gonna measure this one off 
nice thing about this is if we're accurate, we don't really have to measure the last one because it should be about the same. And for these, these two should be the same. And they look pretty close, so it looks like I did a decent job here. So this would be our D, which was 12%, and our F, which was 16%. Okay, this was relative frequency graphs. If there's any part of this that you didn't quite understand, make sure that we uh, pause, rewind, watch again, and bring any questions to class. Thank you.